Smart Glide. This is a new thing that Garmin's put out, and I think it's just get down cool. So today we're going to talk about Smart Glide, and I can't think of anybody better than Paul Stefaniak. Hey. Paul, welcome to the, again uh, to the Mountain Again, Peak. yeah. Again uh, the mountain. Am I a veteran now, Joe, or what am I? Yeah, you know, you I get like you know, I get like stripes on my shoulder. Like I, I got two of them now. <laughs> Three. I don't. I don't remember. So yeah, yeah it's great to be here, Joe. We. Uh, as you said, Smart Glide, we went up today and had some fun today on in the airplane. It's, we did. Yeah. I can't imagine adding another stripe to your epaulet. <laughs> it seems like you're, you'd are you be one of the guys with well, four stripes all the way. Yeah, sometimes people take them off and I have to put them back on. Well, I don't know. It, it teaches me something new every day, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and today was your first experience with Smart Glide. No. I've, yeah, I did Smart it, Glide. I, yeah, I did it in recurrency. So yeah. it's like <laughs> I after I did my recurrency uh what, four or five weeks ago with Steve. And uh, I, I said, I came back and you were around. And I said, Joe, we need to go up and just play around with Smart Glide. Let's get some videos and get it out there and let people see it. It's, it's really a cool thing. It is. Um, I've done it a couple of times. We did it today. I, I learned even more stuff about it. A lot more comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's it's fun, and it's it's. I think it's a very good thing, uh, and I'm I'm lucky to have it. So you know, a lot of I get a lot of pilots without the latest and greatest Garmin, meaning they have a G500, but not a G500 TXI, or they have a 750, but not a 750i. And there's sort of a question of, do you upgrade? And my answer is yes, upgrade to the latest and greatest Garmin. And the reason why is when you have a G500 TXI and a 750i and your whole, everything in, everything in your panel is at that higher level, right. you have the option then of getting Smart Glide. Right. And to me, Smart Glide is incredible. And, I, you know, as you look at it, I think there's a couple things that are just incredible about it. Number one, um, number one with Smart Glide, it does the in the the it does the review of the airports around you to analyze which one is the best one for you to glide to. And as you're flying along and without, you know, you know, when an engine failure occurs, a lot of times that engine failure doesn't come with a pre-warning right. or you know, it just suddenly happens. And all of a sudden you're left in a place of where do I go? If you look at accident analysis. One of the things that we see is that people select poor airports. They select airports that they probably shouldn't have gone to. There was a better airport right over here, just a little further away. Well, Garmin's doing that work for you to think as it's considering all the airports. It's considering it's, right. it's making a decision about what airport mm -hmm. to go to. Literally, so when you push the the Smart Glide button, part I guess the part of it that I like is the smart. You know, it's it's, it's they're devoting the brain power of the Garmin system, in other words, it has a high enough operating right. system to be able to calculate, okay, runway length, the weather that's mm -hmm. happening, and a whole host of other factors as to which airport's the best airport to go to. And so it's smart and safe, to use their words, to be able to push the button because it's probably going to make a really good mm -hmm. decision about where right. you should go. So in the heat of the battle, you lose an engine. Hitting smart glide is pretty smart. Yeah, I, I, that, that's exactly right, Joe. I mean, when you think about it, something like that happens, you're busy as you know what. That's right. All right. So what's smart glide? You're getting somebody else to do what you needed to do if you didn't have it. That's right. right? Yeah. It's finding you an airport. That's it's right. Getting you directing you to the airport. That's right. It's telling you whether or not you're going to make it or not. Um, and and it's giving you, it'll pull up, you know, it'll, it'll load the weather for you. It'll load the frequency. It's doing all the stuff that if you didn't have it, you'd be, oh, now I got to get this. And you're in the middle of an engine failure or some other emergency situation. It might make and, a turn and now, in the wrong direction. And, and now you've got somebody helping you out. That's right. right. And you might turn in the wrong direction, meaning that, right. I mean, that initial turn a lot of times if it's in the wrong direction, it can mm. take away some really good airport right. considerations. Well, this has already done all the figuring for you. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just I just think it's cool. The second thing I love about Smart Glide is, and this has been tried and true over literally a century of flying, that the best way to survive an engine out is to get over the airport and spiral down over that airport, staying in close gliding proximity. A left turn is almost always the best thing because the pilot's sitting on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. and therefore, when you, you're looking out the left door, yep. making a smart, and then gliding down in, and then rolling out when you're a beam the numbers on downwind. Right. 
But don't go out on a downwind basin final. Best right. go and just make a steady left turn to the runway. Con gear, put your gear down. Configure there. If you're in a PA 46, gear down, flaps down. Um, use a slip if needed to be able mm. to get down to that runway. But this the safe the smart glide puts you in a good safe position, right. which is putting you right over the airport. And I just think that's that's where you ought to be. Basically, smart glide puts you over the airport and then hands the airplane to you. It says maneuver and land. Hands the airplane to you. You then take controls, bank the airplane, maintain pitch with with uh, with your um, pitch, but maintain mm -hmm. airspeed with pitch, and then you make a nice approach and landing. Right. To me, that's the best way to do an right. engine out. Yeah. So let me ask you a question about that. And 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 when we did when I did my recurrency uh, four or five weeks ago with Steve, we actually did a smart glide simulation, and then. Uh, I actually left the airplane on autopilot and used the uh, autopilot and heading bug to spiral down and vertical speed to, or airspeed hold to, to spiral down. So yes. doing a situation like that, if you're IFR, what are your feelings about doing something like that IFR? Uh, do you do it or is that a bad idea or a good idea or what, how, what, what do you think? It could be not a bad idea. Now, let's let's work it all the way through and, and talk about that. Um, the goal when you have an engine out is to get over an airport and then spiral down. Once you begin that spiral down, your goal is to end up a thousand feet above the runway on a left downwind to the <laughs> runway you select. Now, the question is, how do you get from that spot? At, at what we in the military we call it a high key, yeah. the high key being the place over the airport, a uh, being the a uh, being the numbers parallel the runway we call the low key. Yeah. So how do you get from the high key to the low key? How do you get from the place where you begin the spiral mm -hmm. over the airport down? And the answer is a pilot has a bunch of tools: bank angle, mm -hmm. drag, and airspeed control. Mm -hmm. Those, yeah, as I think about it, that's probably the bank angle drag, and airspeed control. So one of the things that you have, one of the tools in your toolkit is how much bank do you do you create? Now, so if you use the heading bug and you bank left, it's going to bank the airplane at a prescribed bank angle. Right. Okay. So what is that bank angle? Well, usually it's about 18 degrees in the airplanes that we're flying. Yeah. Is 18 degrees enough? And the answer is it might be. Mm -hmm. But it might be because now you you can now make a decision right. about how much altitude am I going to lose yeah. in one 360 degree right. turn. Well, if you look at 18 degrees, 18 degrees at 120 knots or so is going to be a standard rate turn. So mm -hmm. we're now talking about a two minute turn. Well, two minutes, man, you can lose a lot of altitude in two minutes. If you banked over to, let's just say you doubled it, you went to 36 or 40, mm -hmm. 40 degrees, 45 degrees. You're now going to make a lot tighter turn, and that might be something you want. So the point is, is when you hit that high key and you're looking for the low key, you get to use whatever parameter you want. So right. if I'm, let's just say I'm, I lose my engine at, let's make it up, 20,000 feet, and I'm over the airport, uh, and I'm spiraling down. Well, autopilot may be a great thing because mm. you probably have 10 turns mm. to make that descent. Mm. And autopilot may be your best friend to put it on airspeed mm. mode. <laughs> And put it on heading and just spiral yep. down and control that heading while you're doing other things like tuning in a radio or preparing to check, get reading a checklist or doing. But it, let's say I end up over the airport at 2,000 feet and now only only have 1,000 feet to kill. What a heading mode might right. be an enemy. Right. It might be, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the bank, you've got airspeed that you, to fly and drag to, to be able to control. So if I let me give you another for instance, if I came out at twenty thousand feet or let's say fifteen thousand right. feet over the airport, I'm spiraling down. Should I add uh, gear? And the answer is maybe. You're over the airport. We don't need gliding distance anymore. Right. We don't need best glide speed anymore. Increasing your airspeed is probably a really good idea as far right. as that's concerned. So it's pilot subjectness mm -hmm. or subjectivity. It's a, no, it's pilot gets to make some piloting decisions about this. Mm -hmm. You might want heading, uh, heading control. You might want uh, gear down. You might want mm -hmm. flaps down. It all depends on what, how can you get from that high key to that low key? Right. Great. Yeah. So, and it, to me, it's kind of fun. You know, this is one of the things that we do during uh, recurrent training and initial training. We, we do a lot of engine out work. 
I personally think that the PA46 community ought to be one of the very, very best at engine outs. And here's why. If you go down an airplane to the Cirrus airplane, um, you've got a community that really doesn't do engine outs. They just pull the parachute. Right. If you go up an airplane, you end up in a very turbine world, meaning TBM, King Air, PC-12. And these are airplanes where the engine failure is far less of a consideration because you have right. turbines, not pistons. And so, in my opinion, where you have a high-performance piston airplane in the PA-46 world, you have the Malibu Mirage Matrix M350. This is a space where you have a piston engine, high performance. We're asking a lot of that engine all the time. And engine failures do occur in our space. Right. I will tell you, it's not a, a not an abnormally high space, but it's a place where we have we ask a lot of our engines in, in this piston PA-46 world. And so we should be the best of the best of the best right. in doing an engine out in our space. If you you could argue that the Bonanza uh, people and you know as you Cessna four, two ten people ought to be good as well, and I'd argue they should. But in the PA forty six world, we ought to be good. We do have an accident record that does have engine failures, mm -hmm. and so we ought to be some of the best of the best. Smart Glide's only going to make a better situation if you have right. an engine out. If I, if I have an engine out and I have an airplane with Smart Glide, I'm thrilled it's there. I think Garmin was brilliant by putting mm -hmm. this out and making it so that you have to have the higher processor speeds. In other words, you need to, you need the best of the best right. latest equipment. It's yep. a good reason to go out there and buy, to advance your airplane from what I would call a legacy Garmin panel to a much higher level Garmin panel. Mm -hmm. Because when you do, you're going to get Smart Glide. Smart right. Glide is just smart. It's yeah. just smart. Great. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Paul, thanks for joining me Joe, for the Malibu Group. Another podcast. fun day with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I appreciate you coming uh, to train with us and uh, let us use your airplane to make yeah. videos. And I just think it's, uh, it's great training and great experience for yeah. people to be able to see good work. It's always a pleasure, Joe. Thanks a bunch, Paul. Take care. Hey, Ryan, if you've enjoyed talking about engine outs and smart glide, I appreciate you being here for the Malibu Guru podcast. We train engine outs all the way to the ground. Every time we think it's important for the PA 46 community to be the best of the best when it comes to engine outs and smart glide is just one thing to make us even better. Joe Casey and Paul Stefaniak signing out.